Hey, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Fruitful Vine podcast. My name is Tyler. I'm here with my pastor, Pastor Joel Urshan. Pastor Urshan, how's your day going so far? Blessed. Blessed and favored of the Lord. Amen. We are uh, we are quickly approaching the holiday season. Um, the the playlist on the radio is changing. <laughs> and to all of you out there who a couple months ago were sending uh, fake hate mail our way <laughs> for talking about <laughs> the Christmas music and how early uh, are you allowed to listen to Christmas music? Yes. Well, guess what? The time is now. It is now. It is high time. <laughs> and uh, and uh, we're listening to Christmas music. We're just getting excited for the holidays uh, around here. One holiday that is is coming up is uh, American Thanksgiving. Oh, yes. Our Canadian friends celebrated it just a couple weeks ago. I didn't know that, but now I do. I'm thankful for it. Yes. Uh, and so as we approach Thanksgiving, this these questions may also be as divisive as Christmas music. Okay. Uh, correct timelines uh, to listen to Christmas music. Um, is there a well, let's start with let's start with just the main protein, ham or turkey? Uh, turkey. Okay. Yeah. Turkey. Easy. Yeah. That might have been the most shortest and succinct yeah. answer you <laughs> you've ever given me on any question. Okay. So very quick, the rapid fire. Here we go. We're moving on. Um, <laughs> is there one side dish that? cannot miss the table like it has to be there like if it's the only side dish that's okay thanksgiving could still go on is there one must show up to side dish well in in the urshan family uh through the years um grape leaves actually okay grape leaves domatis yeah uh, it's a part of the uh our uh, it, it's a part of our menu every year for every holiday yeah every holiday um so that actually, it cannot be missed. Um, and so we, we have that for Thanksgiving. And that actually is kind of an entree, too. Yeah. Uh, it, along with the a turkey. So it's like, for those of you who may not know, grape leaves or domates, it's the grape leaves that have been um, like wrapped around rice yes. and a rice, meat. A meat mixture, a rice, meat, uh, uh, dill, uh, yeah, parsley, maybe maybe a little bit of parsley, um, uh, d- like minced onions and things of that nature. Yeah. And then the grape leaves are like marinated, soaked. They like ra- they wrap up that little yes. rice and, and that rice they, mixture. And then they uh, they bake, and it's uh, it's just an amazing dish. It is. It's an amazing dish, and it's and then you have like a little uh, tzatziki sauce. Yeah, that you can have to accompany it. Um, I've noticed we're both like starting to salivate yeah. here <laughs> exactly. as we as we as we prepare for this. So as you prepare your Thanksgiving meals uh, and your recipes and everything, you're welcome for adding domades to your yes. for grape leaves, adding grape leaves to it your menu. It will be a great enhancement. Is there a uh, is there a um, so in addition to grape leaves, is there a like traditional Thanksgiving side dish? Yeah, sweet corn. Sweet is corn a, is a big is a big one. Sweet corn, uh, something that that is also a family tradition in our growing up um, that, that remains to this day is uh, they're called slicks and okay. they're, they're basically dumplings and they're, they're a, um, they're really good. And gra- <laughs> and grandma, grandma Stafford, my mother's mother yeah. used to make those. And so uh, on the, on the Stafford side, we have the slicks and they're, uh, they're they have like a gravy attached to them and it's just a, phenomenal like a like a noodle um and then you have the grape leaves on the urchin side yeah and so we we bring them together in our in our household and so then we have uh of course uh anytime that you you have sweet potato or sweet potato casserole Mm -hmm. that's always a, a plus on my wife's side the enos side that's german heritage Mm -hmm. so there's going to be german potato salad uh, there and um, an amazing uh, dish. Now, th- there there is turkey, but there's also ham and turkey ham. Mm. Even. So uh, it, whichever way you go, and we try to get with both sides of the family if we can around the holidays. Yeah. Everybody's close enough together now that we're, we're able to do that more often than not. And um, 
that's always a, a, yeah. a plus to be able to, to have Persian, German uh, heritage meals. Yeah. So there's, a, there, there's traditional side dishes, and then there are family favorites. Yeah. That's a global tour. Yes. A world <laughs> tour for, uh, for the Thanksgiving meal. Epcot Thanksgiving. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. The world showcase. Right. Yeah. If you wouldn't mind just letting me know the address right. of where you guys will be this year. <laughs> That's right. On Thursday, I'll even I'll come over for leftovers. Yeah, we'll just help help you clean up over there for sure. Uh, we're going to dive into today a topic that uh, you had mentioned wanting to speak about today. Um, sometimes people have have taken this biblical principle and have turned it a little bit to fit uh, their ideology. Uh, but you mentioned to me that you wanted to speak today about um, being present. Yeah, uh, living in the moment. Mm-hmm as um, you may see uh, around your world, or around our society today, you know, live in the moment, seize the day, even these different um, terminologies for, for being present. But uh, would you just dive into that topic today about, yeah. about living in the moment with the Lord? Yes, it's important to live in the moment. Um, and, and a lot of people know this, even uh, those who, who are not of a Christian persuasion try to achieve it. And uh, the, 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 the deception of the enemy, though, is that it, it really cannot be done outside of Christ. If you try to do it outside of Christ, uh, you, you, you will not achieve it, and you will uh, you, you, you exalt flesh and mm-hmm. exalt self. So even the, the, there are those who try to achieve this, but it can only be achieved in Christ because he's the one who achieved it. Yeah, and he's he's coming from a, a vantage point. He is God manifest in flesh, and he steps into time. You know, Jesus Christ is God stepping into time as a human being, and and we find our strength and our power and our grace by being in Christ. Mm-hmm. And when you're truly in Christ, you're able to live presently. And that's so important because I think a lot of times people struggle with either living in the past or living in the future. Yeah. Trying to anyway. It's Anxiety. impossible. Yeah. You're right. It's impossible to live in the past yeah. and it's impossible to live in the future. You can only live right, right here, right now. And the and yet many people live in the past and and the the, the way that that uh, can manifest itself is sometimes they'll live with regret from uh, past mistakes, past failures, or maybe they, or maybe they live in the good old days. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, there's sentiment and nostalgia, and it prevents them from embracing what's happening right now because they're they're reliving an old memory. Now, it is important to remember things. It's important to call back to memory things of the past. Lest you forget. Lest you forget. You you have to remember. But but it's important not to live in the past or to try to live in the past. When, When you attempt to live in the past, basically what's happening is your mind is trying to live somewhere that your body can't go. Your body can't go back to the past. And so you live in this suspended frustration of <clears throat> your mind dwelling on something that no longer exists, the past. Yeah. And your body being stuck in the present, unable to go there. So there's this, there's this suspended frustration. The same is true of the future. Mm-hmm. And the way that that can manifest itself is... Many times uh, you can have anxiety, worries, fears, or dreads about the future, and it prevents you from living in the peace of this moment. Yeah. Or you can, or you can think about things that you want to improve, you want to have improved, you want it to get better, and so you end up missing sometimes a lot of what is happening in the moment. Mm-hmm. And so what God would like for us to do is to live in him, be anchored in him. And when you're anchored in him, 
his very identity is the I am. When Moses asked him, what name shall I give when I go uh, to declare uh, your message to the children of Israel in Egypt? Who shall I tell Pharaoh has sent me? Who shall I, mm. who shall I tell Israel has sent me? And the Lord, the Lord said, I am that I am. That's present language. Yeah. And God operates in the context of, of present. Yeah. I, I think that was so powerful. I was, I was going to add this, and then you added the I am part. The Lord knew where the children of Israel were going to be mentally and emotionally when they hit the Red Sea. Right. And he already had an answer prepared for them. They were afraid of the future mm -hmm. that they wanted to go back to the past. Yeah. You've brought us out here to die. But really, they weren't dying. They were just right. afraid of it. Right. Right. And so we'd like to just go back there. Well, the answer to being afraid of the future and wanting to relive the past is I am. Mm -hmm. That's the answer. That's right. Live in him right now. That's right. You can't be afraid of the future. You can't go forward. Yes. You can't go back to the past. You, you think it was greater back there in bondage, right. but it wasn't. Right. Live right now. Yeah. That's, that's the answer. That's the I am. That's so powerful. Well, and, and that's exactly right. And, and, and here's, what, here's what happens. If you try to go back to the, to the past and you try to recreate it mm -hmm. and relive it, you find that it's not what you remember it being. Yeah. And it and it was what it was, but it's not going to be what it was. Right. And and you can't force it into that because, because God is not trapped in the past and he's not trapped in the future. He operates in eternity. Mm -hmm. And and eternity, there's no there's no time in eternity. So there, since there's no time lapsing in eternity, eternity is like a perpetual moment. It's, it's, there's, there's no distance and there's no time. We try to grasp it by saying he was, he is, and he always will be. That's our best grasp on him right. living in that eternity. Right. Yeah. Be, be, exactly. Because, and, and even that is spoken of in a way that we can understand it right. from our context right. of time. So he's, he refers to himself as he which was and is and is to come. Yeah. He's all of those things yeah. at the same time. Yeah. Was, is, and is to come. Yeah. Before Abraham was, I am. Yeah. I go to prepare a place for you that where I am, there you may be also. God operates as I am. And so when we try to recreate the past, it's not going to be what we expect it to be because it's not going to be what it was. Um, and when we try to step forward into the future, you know, it's, it, that's one of the great tricks of the enemy, to get people to really fear the future. And, and what I like to help people understand is it's, it's, it's not often that the worst-case scenario develops. Very rarely does yeah. the worst-case scenario develop. And if the worst-case scenario were to develop, or if it does develop, you're going to find that the Lord will be there. Mm -hmm. And if the Lord is there, and he is, then it's going to be okay. I don't know how to explain that. Yeah. But I know that when the Lord is present, and he is present, yeah. we call it the presence of the Lord. The presence of the Lord. What do we mean by the presence of the Lord? We're, we're talking about God being present. Mm -hmm. That's what we're talking about. It, it, it's not just, that's not just atmospheric. It, it is him being present. And that's really what you are. You are a being. That's present language. Yeah. Be, being. Sometimes it's important to be. That's why he told, told us, be still and know that I am God. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. If you try to go uh, forward and your mind just contemplate, contemplate, contemplate all of the things that could go wrong, you're, you're, you're frustrating yourself and your faith, and really you're frustrating the grace of God because, because most of the things that you're worried about, if not all of them, will not come to pass. And if, if some of the things that you are worried about, or all of them, do come to pass, if you will wait and allow yourself to arrive there when you are to arrive there, then you're going to find that the Lord has already gone before you. Yeah. And he will give you peace in the midst of the storm. He will give you joy in the midst of sorrow. So Jesus explained this. He said, 
uh, to not take thought for the morrow. Don't worry about tomorrow. Whatever you need, God knows what you have need of. And, and he used this term, sufficient to the day is the evil thereof. You have enough to be concerned about right now. So don't take tomorrow's concerns and conflate them with today's concerns. Yeah. The Lord gave me that scripture at an important time. And it was the it was when we first bought the property on Cooper Road. Okay. <clears throat> we were trying to sell the old building and purchase new property. Well, the old building sold fast, and we didn't anticipate that. We thought that's yeah. going to be the hard part of selling the old building. Well, that turned out to be the easy part. Now we're in a contract where we have to be out of the old building within 12 months, and we've got to find a place to go. Well, that's not the easiest thing in the world to do. Right. Most places aren't ready-made to move into. So, uh, if you can, if you can get uh, into a situation where you are uh, able to purchase property, you know, building would not be an option. We have to set up a church. You know, got to have church um, quickly. And so, in the middle of all of this, I've met a. I, I had a conversation with a pastor friend who asked me how the building was going, if I had sold the old building, if we were into the new one. And I said, well, we've sold the old one, and we've got about five months to to get into the new one. Yeah, I'll never forget him saying, five months? Are you kidding? And I said, no. And he said, man, he said, you better get on that because that could go south in a hurry. Well, I had been on it. We had been really working to make it possible. But when he said that, I felt, I felt worried. Mm -hmm. It worried me. And my mind started racing. Oh my goodness, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? My wife said, you need to, you need to pray. You need to just give this to God. That's always the answer. It's always the answer. That's always the answer. You could save yourself so much anxiety, so much trouble, so much worry. If you just pray and in prayer, just give everything over to God. But I did, I went to prayer and man, the Lord gave me a word. And this was the word. Consider the lilies, how they toil not, neither do they spin. Yet Solomon in all of his glory was not arrayed as one of these. If God then so clothe the grass of the field, which is today in the field, and tomorrow cast into the oven, how much more shall he clothe you? He references the lilies and says that they're more beautiful than all of Solomon's glory. Well, Solomon's glory was his building program, Mm -hmm. the most magnificent temple. David called it exceeding magnificent. And yet the lily in the field is much more glorious than all of Solomon's glory. Mm -hmm. And so the Lord said, If God then so clothed the grass of the field, which is today in the field and tomorrow, cast into the oven, how much more shall he clothe you? He said, Take no thought. Therefore, knowing this, about the things that don't toil, don't spin, don't, they don't get out of control. They're just there by the mercy of God. And he said, if it, therefore, don't you worry about tomorrow. Yeah. What you shall wear, what you shall eat, what you shall drink. For the Father knows that you have need of these things. Mm-hmm. And he said, um, here's what you do. Seek first the kingdom of God yeah. and his righteousness, and all of these things shall be added unto you. And that's, that's what living in Christ in the moment will do. It will allow you to seek first the kingdom of God. And you, you, you can't uh, go wrong with that. So I like to tell people that we should not live in the past. We should learn from the past which includes remembering it, Mm -hmm. which includes uh, learning valuable lessons from it. Yeah. But we shouldn't live in it. And we should should not live for the future. We should plan for the future, Mm -hmm. but we shouldn't live for the future or try to live in the future. Yeah. And we we shouldn't even live for the moment. Don't even live for the moment. Live in it. Yeah, that's good. In Christ. Because a lot of people live for the moment, and they they act like the future will never come. 
um, or they don't learn properly from the past and they just they just do as they would in the moment. But when you're in Christ in the moment, you're going to have great peace. You're going to have joy, even in the midst of what turmoil may exist in that moment. Yeah. Even when it comes to, even when it comes to the most difficult challenges of life, if you'll wait on the Lord and arrive at that place, you will find He has already gone before you. He has already prepared a way. And everything's going to be okay. Yeah. So the Bible says now is the accepted time. Today is the day of salvation. Job said, behold, I go forward. He's not there. I go backward. I can't find him to the left hand, to the right hand. He's nowhere to be found. That's because he's, he's right here. Mm-hmm. You don't have to go forward to find him. You don't have to go backward to find him. You don't have to go forward to when things get better or backward to when things were better. No, he's God right here, right now. Yeah, And that's, you, you quoted the scripture. John on the Isle of Patmos is where we learn that about God. Yeah, He which was and is and is to come. Yeah. We know who he is to come because there are 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands yeah. around the throne singing, worthy is the lamb. Well, we know who he is to come. And we know who he was. John was there when he walked on the water, when he fed the multitudes with five loaves and two fish. We know who he was. We know who he's going to be. What John needed to know was, are you that same God right here in that moment? And he is. He's God right here. So ask the Lord. A lot of times people have trouble controlling their thoughts. Yeah, Their thoughts run away, and they, they don't know how to bring them in. Ask God to help you with that and, and trust that he will. Lord, help my thoughts to be upon you. Mm -hmm. Help my thoughts to be focused on you. Help me not to run away into the future. Help me not to retreat into the past. But let me, let my, the the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. And this is the promise. It will keep you in perfect peace when your mind is stayed on him. And that perfect peace is the contentment of this moment. You don't have. You can be content even though you don't have as much money as you want to have. Mm-hmm. You can be content even though you don't have as much money as you used to have. Mm-hmm. You can be content when things aren't as good as you'd like them to be or if they have even digressed from as good as they were. You can have contentment because it's a spiritual thing, yeah. and it can be achieved and found in Jesus Christ. Yeah. You will live in that peace. You will live in Jesus when your mind stays on him. Uh, Like we talked about last week, don't lead the Lord. Be led by the Lord. That's right. Uh, Let your mind stay on him. Lord, where are you leading me? Let my mind stay on you at all times. Are you leading me here? Are you leading me here? Are you leading me to this conversation? Are you leading me into this kingdom endeavor? Keep your mind on him, and he'll keep you in that perfect peace. Our leadership pastor here, uh, Brother Brian Duvall, asked the Lord one time, Lord, you said not to be worried about the cares of this life. Mm-hmm. What are the cares of this life? And he felt the Lord impress upon him. The cares of this life are things that you won't care about in the next life. Yeah. yeah. And I thought, man, that was so, it was so, so good. good. And it just really takes your mind off of the things you shouldn't be worried about and concerned about. And there's enough evil today. Right. And even those evil things today, if I'm not going to be worried about them in the world to come, I'm not going to worry about them today. Absolutely. Such... Such good word uh, and wisdom today, Pastor Urshan. Thank you for this. Thank you for this time. I encourage you to do what I'm going to do. Go back and watch this episode again and take notes. And uh, let's let our minds stay on Jesus Christ. We love you. We are thankful for you in this season of gratefulness. We are thankful for our watchers and our listeners. God bless you today in Jesus' name.